I'm going to demonstrate resonant solutions for you. So here I'm going to set the natural frequency to be 1 always, and then I'm going to control the damping coefficient and the forcing frequency. So if I leave the system undamped for now, then we have a transient solution, which is not transient, it stays around forever. Um, at the top you can see the forcing function, so here it's pretty low frequency, compared to the transient solution, which remember always oscillates at the natural frequency. So here we are forcing much lower than the natural frequency. And then the full solution of the system is the uh, addition of the transient solution to the particular solution, which is a multiple of the forcing. Now as I increase the forcing frequency, you see we get some kind of odd looking patterns maybe. And eventually as I start to get close to the natural frequency, there is a pattern that emerges. You see how we get, it's on again, and then it's off briefly, and then it's on again, and then it's off. And we can exaggerate that so that it's on for a longer period of time. This phenomenon is called beating. It just shows that since these things are very similar, um, the forcing function is sometimes nearly in phase. So for a while the solution gets bigger, and then it slides out of phase, so it's making the solution smaller and that just keeps repeating itself. But as I get closer and closer to the natural frequency, that time period that it takes to come back down, right, keeps getting longer and longer, and when I'm at a perfect resonance, it never comes back down. It just grows linearly forever. So I just continue to put energy into the system at the perfect time so that the energy continues to grow. Now let me rewind back to small frequencies and put on just a little bit of damping. Now you can see how the natural solution, it's an underdamped thing, but the, transient, the natural solution is transient. The homogeneous solution does decay to zero exponentially. And so the full solution, initially you see that transient, but then gradually you're just going to see a multiple of the forcing function. And now I'll increase the driving frequency. Now you can see there's a brief period of this beating phenomenon, but then the transient solution is gone and it's just a steady sinusoid response. Now I'm nearly at the resonant frequency and notice that the solution gets as high as, I don't know, uh, what is this, 12? 12 and a half times the initial forcing function. And now at resonance, after a while, it seems to settle in at about um, 24 times the original forcing function amplitude. Now, if I were to increase the damping further, of course, then the resonance becomes less and less pronounced. So now it's less than 10, right, and so on. Let me make the damping small again. Let's see what happens if we keep increasing the frequency now. So this is um, actually just slightly past the best possible resonance in the system. This is the natural frequency, although the transient solution has a slightly lower frequency um, in the damped case. But anyway, this is almost as efficient as it gets. And as I continue to increase the forcing frequency, you almost see we go kind of through the same pattern on the other side. And as I get to much higher frequencies, the forcing becomes very inefficient. And you see that the long-term amplitude is actually less than one.